Well, hello there. Tom Green coming back at you with some experience design goodness. And today's goodness is getting comfortable with using the Z-axis feature found in the new 3D transforms introduced with Adobe XD. We sort of covered off 3D transforms in a very basic manner earlier. And let's start playing with individual features of it. Now, before we get going, I have a brief caution. The 3D Transforms feature is really cool. There is a lot you can do with it, but don't go crazy. Just because you can rotate, flip, zoom, and just about anything else you can think of with this new feature, it doesn't mean you can create a jazzy UI with a ton of 3D effects. If you are adding effects simply because you can, or you want to show off, well, then you're making a huge mistake. All effects and motion are there for a reason, to give the user a positive experience. If there is no compelling reason for the effect, then all it is doing is reducing the effectiveness of the experience for the user. So let's get started. The plan here is to use the Z axis to have the plane right here fly out of the clouds here and here toward the user. Now the first step is to select the plane, turn on the 3D transform, and change the plane's Z position to minus, we'll say minus 1500. And you can see it goes right behind the cloud. Now remember, we didn't scale the plane, we just pushed it further away from the viewer. And we're gonna select the cloud, and we're gonna set its Z-axis position to minus 750. And you can see just a little piece of the plane peeking out from behind the cloud. Now the other thing I want you to remember is even though the plane is in a layer above the cloud, so theoretically it should be in front, it's behind the cloud because of the z-axis, which is kind of neat because this gives you an opportunity to kind of ignore layering order when using the 3D transforms. With the start position set, we can now concentrate on the animation. And that starts with duplicating the artboard. So I'm going to select the artboard, hold down my option key here on my Mac. Uh, you guys on a PC will use the Alt key. And I'm just going to move it over. And I'm going to name it end and I'm just going to bring it in so we can see what we've got. So the first thing I want to do is bring the plane a little bit closer to the user. So I'm going to open up the uh, end artboard, select the plane and I'm going to change its Z position to 500 and you can see it just comes zipping out. And I'm going to take the cloud and I'm going to move it back to minus 1500. And I'm going to select this cloud. And I'm going to move it to minus, we'll say 700. Now I'm going to zoom out and apply the interaction. So we'll just uh, zoom out. There we go. Okay, so we got the start, we got the end. Come over to Prototype, select this artboard, drag it over, and I'm going to use a time trigger. So I just want this thing to happen in, without a, an interaction. So we're going to use time, and we'll have it start almost immediately. We're going to use Auto Animate because the plane's in motion, so are the clouds. And we're going to use an Ease Out, and we're going to have the animation last three seconds. So with the start airport selected, let's give it a test. And there you go. Even though this was a rather simple example, you can see the use of the z-axis allows you to ignore layering order and that elements can recede into the background while others at the same time move closer to the user, giving the illusion of a 3D space.